Hey Nintendo fans, it's Jay Wits here and welcome to Nintendo News. You've met with a terrible fate, haven't you? Just yesterday we got a brand new Nintendo Direct with some information on Nintendo 3DS and Wii U games that we can expect at both the end of this year and 2015, and by far the largest announcement, at least in terms of social media buzz that I've seen after the Nintendo Direct, was Majora's Mask 3D. This isn't really an announcement that surprises me. Majora's Mask ran on the same engine that Ocarina of Time did, and since they were able to pretty easily pour Ocarina of Time over to the 3DS, it was only a matter of time. Oh, that's a good one, a matter of time. Before Majora's Mask found its way onto the 3DS. Majora's Mask is by far one of my favorite Legend of Zelda titles, and I really think that the portable format is going to suit it very well. It's all about taking on all kinds of different individual missions across that three-day timeline that you continue to go forward and back through, and I think it'll perfectly suit being able to pick up, run through a mission on your portable system, and then put it away when you're done. Because Majora's Mask is one of the most complicated Zelda games of all time, it was mentioned that this version of the game would have some kind of way to aid players that are new to the game while still keeping it as challenging as the original. Just a couple of days ago, I was running through some of my old video game manuals, and I actually saw I used the notes section for Majora's Mask, the original one, when I was a kid. So there's definitely a lot to keep track of in Majora's Mask, but I'm sure if you use something like a map system or a note system with the 3DS, it should be great. Altogether, this is still going to be the Majora's Mask that you know and love, but the slightly upscaled graphics and the portable format are what really excite me. There was another big announcement that I've personally been waiting for in this Nintendo Direct, and that is a release date for the first batch of Mario Kart 8 DLC. The DLC, which was long rumored to come out in late November, is actually coming out November 13th. That includes eight new tracks, three new characters, and four new vehicles. Speaking of new vehicles, we finally got a look at them in action, including the beautiful Master Cycle and Link, who surprisingly blends in pretty well with the Mario Kart universe, and the Blue Falcon, which surprisingly breaks my heart. I've been waiting for the fast-paced, highly colorful, and highly dangerous racing that is F-Zero on the Wii U for a long time now, but while we do have it in DLC form, it just isn't the same as having it as its own complete game. We haven't seen a console release of an F-Zero game since the GameCube, and I could not tell you when we'll ever see another one. But on the bright side, at least they chose not to release this DLC on that nightmare date, which is November 21st, when Smash Bros. for Wii U and the new Pokemon Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire games come out. I could not do three games at once, I don't even know if I can do two, but thankfully you got about a week to play it before you lose your entire life to those two games. The Nintendo Direct also delved into some information for games that we haven't really heard about since E3. Splatoon, for example, showed its single player mode in a brief trailer. Now while its multiplayer mode was a ton of fun, it was actually my personal highlight of this year's E3, I'm very excited to see that the single player campaign isn't just more multiplayer matches, but it seems to be an actual platforming game with designed levels based around the ink mechanic. There was some 8-bit stuff, some boss fighting stuff, overall I'm still highly curious to see more about this game, and we did get a vague release date of quarter 2 2015 for it. We also got a better look at the intelligent system strategy game, codenamed Steam, for the Nintendo 3DS. This game is a third-person action strategy title where you play in a steampunk universe with Abraham Lincoln, Tiger Lily, and Tom Sawyer and fight against aliens? I don't even know! The premise seems extremely strange, but I'm a strategy game glutton, and this game looks like something that could be amazing on a portable format. From what we've seen from the gameplay so far, it reminds me a lot of Valkyria Chronicles, which is one of my favorite strategy games of all time. The more I hear about this game, the weirder it seems by the second, and I think that's a good thing. We also got a brief look on a few other games, such as Captain Toad, where you got a brief snippet of every one of the levels. So far, every time I've played Captain Toad, either at E3 or PAX, I've had a great time, the levels have been very unique, and it should be a great budget title over the holiday. And Kirby Rainbow Curse, which seems to be the logical sequel to Kirby Canvas Curse, where you draw lines using the stylus onto the gamepad instead of the Nintendo DS screen. But they also briefly talked about a multiplayer mode where other players can move around like a normal platformer, while one player moves around as Kirby still using the gamepad screen and making the platforms. In general, it seems like every time Nintendo makes a new platformer, they find some way to make it cooperative play, and I'm all for it. And finally, Nintendo took a pretty extensive look on their upcoming Amiibo figures. From what I can tell, they seem like a combination of nicely crafted figures that you can display if you're a collector, and a little bit of DLC for a lot of different games. For example, you could use a Link Amiibo on Smash Bros. for Wii U as a figure player, you can use it in Hyrule Warriors in order to unlock a new weapon, you can use it in Mario Kart 8 in order to unlock a new costume for your Mii. The more games that Nintendo puts into these Amiibo figurines, the more added value I think they're going to have, and that's pretty exciting. 
And speaking of new Nintendo technology, Nintendo has finally outlined a little bit of these new quality of life devices that the company said they're going to invest in for the future. The first device that Nintendo has talked about for the future is a sleep sensor that would monitor your quality of sleep and fatigue while you're sleeping. The device operates with radio frequencies, and while this doesn't necessarily seem like something that I would use, it is interesting to see Nintendo invest in other opportunities outside of video games. The way I see it, the emerging health business is humongous, especially in Japan, but even over here in the States you can see all kinds of ways that companies are trying to break through. You have things like Apple trying to use their watch to encourage fitness, you have the Microsoft Band that's supposed to help you monitor your daily activities. In general, seeing Nintendo jump into an industry that isn't necessarily video games could be very good for the company as a whole, and the better the company does, I'm hoping that means they'll have more resources available to put back into video games. That's it for today's Nintendo news, but as always, if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, you can click this button right here to subscribe to my channel and get alerts right when new videos are coming out. There's supposed to be a Koro Koro leak right before Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, so stay tuned, there should be more Pokemon news coming to this channel soon, right before Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire drop. Until then, thank you guys for watching, enjoy all the new Nintendo games coming out soon, and I'll see you guys for the next Nintendo video.